what's up people welcome back to the channel so i have i've been wanting to put out a balanced video for like maybe the past couple days but i've been a little bit busy and trying to put it together so i decided just to go ahead and put this quick one here like like to be honest konami is not going to give us the emergency ban list to be honest they would have done that we probably would have got that maybe like two weeks ago like like, like you feel me around two weeks so we would have got one i'm pretty sure this th this format is going to ride out for an, either till the end of this month we should be expecting one very soon because the whole be like like no sooner than a couple months it's been a couple months we are in that range so i'm gonna go ahead and throw out just cards that i feel right now would probably just fix a problem at hand this is not like like I, I feel like maybe they might kind of put this one out and then say the next one's gonna come out in a few months and literally like two months from now around right around right before nationals here we could get another ban list so this is right here just a ban list that would kind of solve the problem we got going on right here so the first thing as you can see right here we are talking about banning dimensional shifter to be honest i personally don't want this card banned but i don't want it to get the max e treatment to where we have it we have it at, at three and it's just this hardcore turn ending um it's it's this hardcore turn ending card to be honest it, it, it is a little better than max c like like here like, hear me out no people are getting mad but maxi could be run in any deck to counter almost any other deck shifter could only be ran in certain decks to counter 90 percent of the decks that are either good or just trying to get something done a lot of rogue decks just lose to that shifter so i feel having shifter because like there's also a lot of cards that i feel like i could have chose to kind of you know like like take out like i i like for spoiler i'm not i, I don't have the harpy's feather storm on i don't have a um dim uh, dimensional barrier like uh, on, on here on here either simply because like i don't want like i, I like lately like, like, cards like that i feel like you know are fine you know like with storm you, you can only use it in the in Flanderies or you know like with you know in it, you know if you meet those exact conditions and then with the other one i feel like every a, every deck could use it for a quick floodgate although it does really turn off certain strategies a lot of decks are starting to be hard having two you know like like, like having two bridges so i yeah, picked a very <laughs> picked a very bad time to do whatever you're doing here. All right. Anyway, so I, I feel like uh, back to what I was saying. I feel like a lot of decks have two have you know ha have two bridges to where like even if they get hit by that, a lot of them are able to go into a different route. But Shifter just completely shuts everything down, and it's like only certain decks could kind of use it. And once it's in the once it's in the format, it just kind of turns everything off. So Shifter is one of those cards that I feel like it's maybe it's the time to get the max E treatment, and we're not gonna have it at one. We don't want it to be Saki, so let's just kind of go ahead and get rid of it. This is was a real toss up. So this is kind of hit or miss for certain people. Snake Eye, Snake Eye's Flamber Shrek, and I feel like banning this card would really help out to curve the power of Snake Eye. Even because like you like, like we pretty much gotta face it. Konami is going to keep the newer expensive cards, right? Like like Konami has to kind of you know like 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 bend here or there, and I really feel like 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 like. Konami is going to want to keep the Promethean Princess. Konami is going to, like, like e even, like, I was going to think about putting World Dragon Z Zelantis, which, to be honest, maybe, like, you could put the Amblo Whale on here instead of Snake Eye of Flamberge, you know, like, to kind of get rid of the OTK, but... I feel like if we take away Zelantis, then we're gonna take away a lot of other decks that have the ability to use that that OTK because you know like it, it's it it isn't bad to have these of you know like certain OTKs, especially for like weaker decks that kind of need it. And then if we and then if we take away the Amblo Whale, that just might not be enough. So taking out the Flambridge is gonna is gonna have them end on either force them to do like the, the you know force them to do like the Zelantis lock, which is maybe a little easier to like you know a little easier to play around and depending on what you're doing, or <clears throat> you just prevent them from being able to put up boards where it's like okay i'm gonna have all this stuff do all this and then still be able to or you know still be able to bring out the you know bring out the monster they put out which is ivy mascarena which is going to create even more kind of interruption so getting rid of flambridge will like really kind of help out the power level of the deck and then also an another thing is uh getting rid of albion the sanctifier dragon uh it's a uh, gimmick puppet is just really really hard so I, I I know that like there's like there's there's talks of um uh, the uh, fossil Dyna kind of like coming to the meta as like you know sir I know I think it's like Valence or like, other decks are able to kind of play the floodgate and to be honest 
like uh decks like like, like decks have to go through though like that much effort to get the, the floodgate out you know like it's okay like i understand you don't want like all that but it, it's a little it's a little harder to do when, when it comes to like when it comes to i'll be on the signifier dragon you literally just as long as you get branded fusion you know it, especially because the voices voice are really abusing it right now and voices voice would be is would be good without the branded fusion i really feel like getting rid of the gimmick puppet option would probably kind of get them off that and get them to running the deck the way you, i guess a little more pure so that way they're not kind of adding in all the other you know extraness so this one getting banned i'd be kind of cool with that now we're going to start with cards that i feel like need to go to one snake eye ash so like i said bonfire diabal star the the, the the you know uh wanted all that stuff is not going to get hit Pro, uh Promethean Princess, the Poplar, that stuff is just not gonna get hit. I really feel like those, it's like the, the, those are gonna stay not like not only to keep the deck alive but also because some of that some of those cards could be used in engines for other decks which kind of make the format give the format illusion to be more diverse even though it's just going to be snake eye with whatever extra small you know whatever extra little engine that you want to add in with it but if we if, if we get rid of the snake eye ash it's really going to kind of bring down that consistency along with like i said along with getting rid uh, along with you know getting rid of the flamer dragon and also putting the next card at one is fire king high avatar cure so th this one i'm borrowing a bit from mst.tv like you know because like I, I i originally like i said i was just kind of putting something you know together quick and i saw this video a few days ago and i thought about it and i'm like you know what the deck's main weakness is hand traps so if you want to curve the power you need to get uh, like i just this is my personal philosophy this i i can't remember exactly what he said about it but my personal philosophy is if you want to curve the power of the deck go ahead and do one of two things you want to get rid of some of its more powerful and board pieces that allows it to do more unfair things like be able to like you know summon monsters do the combo and then bring them back essentially for free on your opponent's turn on top of that make them more susceptible to hand traps because one of the best way to defeat you know the fire king deck is to you know fire king snake eye however you're playing it is to use you know like it's to use like two good hand traps on it valor imperm imperm ash uh droll you know valor you know like uh imperm valor you know in the uh, impermanent bureau different combinations of those hand traps are just really good against the deck and and getting rid of one of their main abilities to kind of play around it because you know this could be like quick effect target to destroy to summon it so that way they don't get hit with the hand trap would also be like a really good way just bringing it to one so that way they have to hard draw it or they have to search it instead of another piece so that way if they choose to like you know they don't hard draw it they have to choose to like search out this protection so that way they don't just always have the potential to have like just a freaking like 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 a pseudo call by the grave for their deck always in their hand so bringing this down to one would be like i, I really do like I, I think that would be a good idea summon limit summon limit is something that a lot of people are talking about this is like like kind of pretty obvious i personally don't want this to happen because i'm still a little salty about them getting rid of the other floodgates but so far i do feel like Yu-Gi-Oh is a bit of a better place without those ones and at the same time, Yu-Gi-Oh! is also a game of you take away the best, we will find something to replace it. So unfortunately, we might just go through a chain of like, for the next, maybe even year, maybe I'm, we might be talking, to, like the next year, we might be talking about different floodgates that just need to be limited to one. And Summon Limit is one of those cards that just gotta go to one. Unless maybe they, uh, they, they, they do a couple more hits, like, you know, there's a couple other cards that I mentioned that they could hit on this list. If they add those cards in there, maybe like put in world dragons elantis and whale and a couple other things that way you can't do like certain hardcore otks that with a board them or a little bit you know more you know easier to deal with maybe like they could kind of leave it but to be honest if you put up a full powered snake eye board even a half power snake eye board and you flip a summon limit with no response it is just as bad as banning especially like you know you're you summon two you flip this and your opponent's really not doing much or vice versa you're not really doing much so bringing summon summon limit down to one because you, you do still need cards like this in Yu-Gi-Oh, but having them at three i, I i'm kind of starting to realize that like if you want like a healthy competitive card game that's that's not just floodgate city yeah like we we kind of we need to bring this stuff down to one let's go ahead and just add anti-spell fragrance to that list to be honest this right here has been one low-key one of the best floodgates in Yu-Gi-Oh. it's it's always probably in the conversation of the top 10 best floodgates and it probably teeters within the top five depending on who you're talking to especially because 
it literally shuts down an entire mechanic and pendulum you cannot pendulum summon if you have anti-spell fragrance up so essentially like 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 that not only can you just shut down an entire like entire like mechanics so if you're playing valence this just shuts down this just shuts down like a lot of the stuff that you know like like any kind of uh any kind of strategy that they're, they're trying to do that doesn't involve them just summoning their monsters they're not able to put them in the they're not able to you know like you know like you're basically not able to set pendulums so this right here prevents them from doing any kind of strategy like that and then it also sets the game back a lot you are set depending on you know depending on when you set your cards and whatnot you are set back an entire turn a turn and a half this right here is just really devastating depending on when it's used so anti spell fragrance at one maybe even banned to be honest like this like this is a this card could be banned worthy you know like 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 was like of uh, with uh, with, with some of them, it's a little different, you know, because like you know, you just you just MST Cosmic Cyclone, you know, destroy it. With this one, it's, it's a different story. If you don't hard draw that Cyclone or MST, you are not getting rid of this. Like if you have a monster effect that allows you to draw, you are not drawing into uh, a Cosmic Cyclone and just destroying this. You have to set it, and your opponent could destroy it, and they're gonna know. They're gonna kind of have an idea of what you're trying to do for setting stuff. So yeah, like Anti Spragrance could be a card that should be should go to one potential even getting banned and the last two cards that i want to put on my list are courtesy of the homie nacho that i was talking to yesterday the homies came over to my house my boys appreciate them pretty soon we're gonna bring out the Yu-Gi-Oh commander series but i got, I got a couple of my come on homies still working on their deck and you know we were still working on getting everyone here together but he pretty much mentioned that he felt like super poly needed to be put on the list and i'm gonna go ahead and say okay fine but at two I honestly do not want Super Poly to be touched right now. I, I'm currently working with the U Bell strategy, and I really like having it at three. The, it, it's, it's especially since I already put Shifter on there. Like that's like 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 a really good um like a really good hand trap that's like for the deck because you know you don't always need the graveyard, but at the same time you know because you use the Unchained stuff to make a board, but. Having the ability to search a Super Poly is already really good in itself, even though it's very conditional. At the same time, I really feel like. If we're going to have such high level Yu-Gi-Oh, even like like I said, e even if you take away the some of the Snake Eye stuff, and then I'll also if we do some other stuff to you know bring down voice vo voices, voice like I have another one more card to talk about, you are still we're still dealing with a really powerful format. Like people like understand like power creep is real in Yu-Gi-Oh, but just because you power creep something, like just because you power like this, you sit there and power creep the gimmick puppet lock, but then you still have Winda. You feel me? Like there's like there's like there's still window, and even if you get rid of window, there's still other cards that that could do similar things. So it isn't like you're always gonna get rid of these problems. And I, I like I said, like so like I I, I really I really feel like I like I said I I I, I don't know maybe maybe like, I don't know maybe I'm just ranting because I, I I really don't want to get rid of Super Poly, but. He is right. Super Poly is like really strong, and maybe you know, feel like maybe we should put it at two, especially because like the only deck that's really going to be using it is going to be the Yobel strategy that could already search their own Super Poly. So bringing Super Poly to two, you know, like would kind of make sense. But another thing that would make a little bit of sense is to bring Diviner the Herald down to two. Now, the, uh, originally I was going to say it needs to go to one, but I think that's like a little bit like too low. Like I think you're going to be like really hitting. Uh, voice is voice like a little too hard plus you're gonna have like like a, a couple of other you know like little rogue strategies that kind of want to use this stuff so to be honest diviner at two i feel like it's perfect because a lot of rogue strategies usually kind of like runner at two or if they run out three they'll like you know side one out or you know no. and it'll, it'll also still give the voices voice the ability to like have a good i have a good you know consistency rate to hard draw it and then you know they, they do run like some good consistency cards to be able to get into this they, i think they have, they have like you know like i, I believe they have like i, I, I don't know they have i don't know, like can recommend the comments down below they have the ability to search this card but they they do have consistency tools that will help them get to this so bringing diviner to two would be kind of an interesting way to kind of to, i guess to kind of curve the power of this current format bring it down a little bit so that way some of the, the newer stuff can kind of compete maybe we could kind of create like a like 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 you know like a top like a top three like in, in the meta and then have like you know like a you know maybe like a, maybe like a little pool of five other decks that are kind of like 1.5 all right guys that's for the video leave your comments down below for other cards that you feel like need to be hitting the list maybe i will do a part two peace out catch you in the next one